Hi guys, this is Taryn Packer and I'm a simulation product specialist with Go Engineer. Today I'd like to talk to you about the modal time history capability in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Modal time history is a type of dynamic analysis that tests the output of a model due to a large fast force input. A force versus time curve is put into the system and a displacement stress or strain versus time curve is output from the system after the analysis is complete. Here we will observe the response of a basketball hoop after a 260 pound force hits the rim of the basketball hoop over a very short time period as if a basketball player had dunked a ball into the hoop. To access modal time history analysis, open up a new simulation study and choose the very first option under the linear dynamics options. Make sure the natural frequencies the program uses in its calculations will cover the frequency range needed. Here we are asking the program to use the first 15 natural frequencies of this object in its calculations. We do this so we have enough mode shapes in the final dynamic response. Then make sure to set up a start and end time as well as a time increment. Typically, the overall time of the study should not be too long and the time increment should be small enough for a solution to converge. Here we choose 80% of a second for the overall study time because the basketball dunk happens that quickly and there is no need to take up any more time and computer resources than that. We choose a time step of 0 0.005 seconds because the time increment needs to be small enough to capture the frequency of the vibrating rim. Now the study properties have been set up correctly we need to make sure the correct parts are assigned to the correct materials. Our basketball rim is made of alloy steel, so that is what we will assign to our analysis. Next, apply fixtures to the areas of the model that would be constrained in real life, if the model were being tested in the real world. We assign fixtures to the bolt holes to constrain our basketball rim as if it was actually bolted down. After the fixtures, we can apply the fast loading event to the front part of the rim of the basketball hoop. Open a force load property manager and apply the force to the correct face. We are applying a downward force here. To edit the speed at which the load is applied, click on the curve option under the variation with time and click edit. In the X column, specify the seconds at which the force loads are happening as well as when they are not happening. In the Y column, specify which time periods have a load being applied and which do not have a load being applied, as well as how large that load will be when it is applied. For dampening, we're going to put in a standard dampening ratio over the frequency response of 1 to 15 natural frequencies that we specified in the study properties for this type of analysis, which is 0.05. To save on time, we'll use the default mesh curvature-based mesh size for this analysis and run the analysis. After the analysis is complete, we can easily view the displacements of the basketball hoop after the fast force load is applied by choosing the defined response graph and setting the property manager to the Y displacement in inches. See the response of the hoop after the force load and how the vibrational energy of the hoop is dampened over time. The first response is the basketball player's first touch on the hoop during the slam dunk. The second response is the basketball player's release of the hoop after the dunk is complete. In both responses, the displacement of the hoop over time is shown and the vibration of the hoop as the frequency energy is dampened over time is very evident. This has been Taryn Packer and I hope you've enjoyed this video.